India's relationship with the United States is the strongest it's been in years. But despite the warm embraces from Joe Biden, India is also growing closer to China and just sent a clear message to the US government. India's freedom takes precedence over being a US ally. India is in a geopolitical hotspot. It's being courted by countries around the world, most notably in the global south, as countries in Africa, Latin America, and Southeast Asia build a closer relationship with the now world's most populous nation. The reason is simple. With a GDP of $3 trillion and the fifth largest economy, India is the world's next superpower. What's ironic about India's rise is that it's an important partner for the future of both the United States and China. Joe Biden invited Prime Minister Modi to the White House for an official state visit in June, and the Prime Minister was happy to engage with the United States as the two countries' combined trade was over one. $144 billion last year. However, just two months later, Modi also traveled to Johannesburg, South Africa to attend the BRICS summit, where he met with Chinese President Xi Jinping. We can't forget that India is a founding member of the BRICS alliance and also has a keen interest in improving relations with the United States' biggest enemy. Russia. When the US and EU banned Russian oil imports last year, India refused to join the sanctions. Instead, Indian oil refiners began purchasing large quantities of discounted Russian oil. Fast forward to today, and Russia has become India's leading source of crude oil, accounting for 40% of India's crude imports. This is the precise reason why India refuses to form a traditional alliance with the US government. While the US remains critical of India purchasing Russian oil, the CEO of India's top oil company argues importing Russian oil is a win-win for the world economy. By importing from Russia, India has helped the global economy free up some oil on the Gulf for other countries to source, particularly Europe. It also has a very huge impact on our economy, helping the Indian economy grow. India is simply acting in its own best interests and not letting the US government dictate what's best for India's future. A Middle Eastern energy insider shared a brilliant quote that perfectly explains why India must take advantage of cheap Russian oil. God has given India a lot of things, but resources is not one of them. India has limited amounts of oil and limited amounts of gas. India remains the world's third largest energy importer and buys 80% of its crude oil from international markets. If India followed orders from the United States and condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it would destroy the Indian economy and erase the enormous potential it has in the coming decades. We've seen this play out directly with Germany, who is now predicted to be the only major European economy to contract this year as recession lingers. Germany, of course, is in a strategic alliance with the United States and has little options but to follow the foreign policy interests of the Americans. That's why when the Nord Stream pipelines were mysteriously destroyed, which, by the way, I think we all know who did it, Germany immediately lost access to cheap Russian gas, which was the backstone of the German industrial industry. With no end to the Russian-Ukraine war in sight, Germans and other European nations are preparing for another brutal winter filled with soaring energy prices and a contracting economic outlook. One of America's most famous foreign policy experts, Henry Kissinger, has a quote that describes this situation perfectly. To be an enemy of America can be dangerous but to be a friend is fatal. While the US has made Russia its top geopolitical enemy, the Indian government has refused to condemn Russia's government for its actions in Ukraine. Instead, Prime Minister Modi has argued for more dialogue and diplomacy to end the war in Ukraine. The US government wants nothing more than India to condemn Putin and cause disruption to the BRICS alliance, but India has refused to do this. And if we study history, we can learn the exact reason why. India and Russia's close relationship is not new. In fact, it began almost immediately after India gained its independence in 1947. After India decolonized, it was a poor nation struggling to advance. During the Cold War, India's most strategic partner was in fact the Soviet Union. At the time, India did not have very close relations with the United States or Western allies. In fact, it was the Soviet Union who gave India raw materials and security support through Russian arms and ammunition. Even today, 70% of India's military resources and arms are made by Russia, which means that India must rely on Russia for parts, upgrades, and software. During the Cold War, developing countries were pressured to either join the Western Bloc, led by the United States and its NATO allies, or the Eastern Bloc, led by the Soviet Union. 
Fast forward to today, and a second Cold War is upon us, once again forcing developing countries to choose between the United States-led Western Bloc or the Eastern Bloc, which is now led by China. But India has maintained a policy of non-alignment, which gives the government the freedom to not entangle itself in issues or affairs that would harm its national interest in economic development. This is the exact reason why the Indian government refuses to speak out against Russia. When you are a developing country, you simply can't afford to be entangled in geopolitical conflicts outside of your country. If India is truly going to become the world's next superpower, it must gather as many resources and partnerships from every single nation in the world, including China, Russia, and the United States. This is the exact reason why India is joining as many coalitions, alliances, and groupings as possible and fully embracing the new multipolar world we live in. India has joined China and Russia in a security bloc called the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, but it has also joined the United States, along with Japan and Australia, and a Western security bloc called the Quad. One could argue these two security blocs have polar opposite goals and vastly different strategic interests, but yet here we see India standing with one foot in each of the two security blocs. The Indian government is now embracing a foreign policy of multi-alignment, where India can join as many different alliances as possible with one simple goal, increase trade and grow the Indian economy. Unfortunately for the US government, one of the simple things they've overlooked is how Western sanctions on Russia are pushing India and the BRICS alliance closer together. Since India has its feet firmly planted in both the Western and Eastern-led trade and security blocs, one could argue that India is the most important country for the entire BRICS alliance. It has the best of both worlds, a close relationship with the United States, but also a strategic partnership with China and Russia. As China and Russia try to grow BRICS into an alliance that can seriously challenge the US world-led order, they will need the full support of India. India has already been a major contributor to the Russian economy through its purchase of crude oil. And despite ongoing border clashes and struggles with China in recent years, the recent BRICS summit in South Africa saw both Xi and Modi come together and formally agree to de-escalating border tensions and finding a way to peacefully coexist. The BRICS alliance is growing stronger, and last month's summit saw the organization officially invite oil heavyweights, Saudi Arabia and the UAE, as well as Iran, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Argentina to join the alliance in 2024. Adding Saudi Arabia and the UAE is a game changer for the BRICS alliance. Along with Russia and Iran, the BRICS alliance now controls over 50% of the world's oil production. It's a major concern for Western countries as the expanded BRICS alliance gives the group incredible leverage to influence the future of the crude oil industry. The world's top oil executives met in Singapore last week to discuss the impacts of the oil industry. Despite the West's best efforts to curb Moscow's ability to raise funds for the war in Ukraine, the Western-led sanctions against Russia have completely failed. Paul Sankey, president and lead analyst at Sankey Research states, the price cap was invented by bureaucrats with finance degrees. None of them really understand oil markets. It's been a total bomb. It has failed completely. The flip side of sanctions is that it creates stronger bonds between BRICS countries, the polar opposite of Western politics. But I'm going to wrap up today's video with an interesting trend I've been noticing amongst BRIC countries, but also mention the sponsor of today's video, who is West Red Lake Gold Mines. As India, China, and the entire BRICS alliance continues to grow, one of the potential developments is a new BRICS currency that is backed by gold. We are still a few years away from a new BRICS currency emerging, but it does look like China, Russia, and India are starting the process by stockpiling as much gold as possible. The UAE, who once again will be joining the BRICS alliance this January, has become a key trade hub for Russian gold. In addition, the Reserve Bank of India's gold reserves has risen by 40% in the past five years alone. Gold has been a strategic investment for India. Previously, the Indian government invested its U.S. foreign currency reserves in U.S. government bonds to earn interest. But with soaring inflation in the United States, the real interest rate on these bonds have actually turned negative. I've always been a fan of gold as part of a balanced investment strategy, and I want to tell you about today's video sponsor, West Red Lake Gold Mines, which trades under the ticker WRLD. GF. Let's start with the location of this investment, which is in the Red Lake District in Ontario, Canada. This region is a hotspot for many successful mining companies, and West Red Lake operates everything you see here in red, including the very important Madsen location, which is unlike any other opportunity in the region. The Madsen Project is a past-producing mine and mill which experienced significant problems during the COVID pandemic. Poor management and financial decisions meant this mine 
never reached its full potential and was instead sold to new owners. But this is where a unique opportunity presents itself. West Red Light Gold Mines has assembled an incredible team that can, can turn around this mine and potentially help it realize its full potential. Let's start with Frank Gustra, who is on the team that turned Gold Corp into the world's fourth largest gold producer. Frank is also a successful entrepreneur who founded Lionsgate Entertainment, a global media and entertainment company. Shane Williams is the president of West Red Lake Gold Mines, and he has been in the mining industry for over 30 years and previously served as the COO of Skeena Resources, another successful gold mine in Canada. And finally, Tony Makich was the CEO of Kirkland Lake Gold, another successful gold mining company. So here we have West Red Lake Gold Mines bringing together a very capable management team, which is by far one of the most important things to do when you're trying to recover and restore an existing mine. The team now has a six step plan to revitalize the mine and bring it into full production. The Matson location has great potential with over $350 million invested to date in its core infrastructure. In addition, it's one of the rare mines that also has a state of the art mill on site to process the gold that is mined. This is a huge competitive advantage for the Matson location. The final piece that's worth mentioning is the insiders who own and believe in this company. Sprott Resource Lending Corp is one of the largest global asset managers in the mining sector. They own 23.4% of this company. Other institutions own another 16% and Frank Gustra, who I mentioned earlier, owns 11.8% himself. If you're interested in learning more about gold mining and the potential for West Red Lake gold mines, I'm going to put their full investor presentation and link to their website down in the description below. As always, please do your own due diligence before making any investment. And thank you for watching today's presentation about India and how gold, bricks, geopolitics, and cross-border relations are impacting the world that we live in. Everyone, thank you so much for your continued support and thanks for making it to this point in the video. I so look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.